Hey everyone, how are you? How's the sound today? Is it better than last week? I switched out my microphones. All right, just, um, oop. didn't want to do that. Hey, let's go, man. Um, hey, so you guys can hear me, right? Somebody uh, just chat. Give me a chat that you can hear me. That would be really, really cool. Hey, Amit. Um, yes. Much better sound. Yeah, I, I mean, I have, I've had this microphone for like, I don't know how many uh, years, over 10 years. And uh I bought a better microphone, and this one just is just an all-around much better. Hey, everyone. I really want to appreciate you joining me here today. Um, so the purpose of this morning's class, I'm not quite sure how long I'm going to go with it. Uh, the usual has been about an hour, and then usually people start to fade off, and I get that. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful Saturday. Now, I have to preface uh, before I start that um, – thank you, Michael – that we are um, going to have, like here on Long Island, the quarantine still in effect, and um, someone's having a birthday party. So the, the thing here in New York is when somebody has a birthday party, cars drive by the person's house who were invited to the party, and they beep their horns like crazy. Um, so I think it's going to get really noisy outside in about an hour. The dog is outside uh, with my wife because it's really, really nice outside today. We've been shut in. It's been raining. It's been really, really bad in terms of the weather. Like it's been 45 degrees uh, in late April with wind and rain every day. So um, it's been awful. So uh, let, let's get started here because I know your time is really, really valuable. So the point of um, actually, let me share with you. I worked on this one for a little while last week after the live class, and I really wanted to keep it somewhat painterly. So that was uh, what I came up with last time. Uh, like I said, I wanted to keep it loose. I, I think I worked on it for about 35 to 40 minutes after the live stream. I filmed those videos, but I was so busy this week, I didn't even have time to get them back up on onto the website, not back up, but onto the website. Um, so that will happen this week because I just finished uh, the spring semester at the School of Visual Arts yesterday. Okay, uh, yeah, so let me explain. This, what you're seeing here in the center of the screen is a bust, a statue, a cast, however you wanna call it, um, that I photographed in the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art and it is in the American Wing and the author, well, not the author, the sculptor, um, his name is William Ordway, O-R-D-Y-W-A-Y, uh, -Y. and the name of the uh, statue is Partridge, like the Partridge family. Um, so William Ordway, Partridge, and uh, the symbol behind this statue was peace and tranquility. And he was really, really uh, influenced by Rodin, and uh, so we're going to go for it today. Now, what I want to start with today with you is not uh, the angles. I want to be highly organic because there's a lot of gestural lines in, in this statue uh, here today. So I, I sketched this one out this morning as a, as a quick warm up to get my hand loosened up and my hands never uh, loosened up. Uh, and what I noticed as I'm drawing is, and this is the first thing, step number one, uh, it's my opinion and you can completely disagree with me and that's okay. I like to draw at a three-quarter view with form light. I think it's one of the best ways to draw. Do I draw that way every single time? No. Do I think it's the best way? Yes, absolutely. So when I look at this statue, the first thing I like to do is get the view that is the three-quarter. I even do this in the classroom with the model. And then I light the model, light the statue. In this particular case, I got lucky. The Met lit the statue with form light. So how is it form light? Well, we have a line that separates here. This is why I have this pre-drawn for you uh, right here that shows um, front of the face, side of the head. 
okay? And then we even have it on the nose, front of the bridge of the nose, side of the nose. So it's pure form light. Light is coming from up above. Um, there's a shadow underneath the nose. Uh, if I was photographing a model for my book covers that I used to do, I'd never have that type of shadow under the nose. But for this statue, it works. Now, my goal is to always get the likeness. But um, what I also noticed, and this could trip a lot of people up, is, okay, fine, you know, first step, and I'll get to drawing here in about a minute, I promise you, I, I know your time is valuable. First step is that uh, try to get the best view. Try to get the best lighting, but if you're not sure of the lighting, assess the lighting. How many light sources are hitting this statue? There's totally, uh, I think there's two light sources. So what we see here, and I'm pointing out my drawing, but you you, you really want to look at the statue. I'll, I'll, I'll draw this out. So what we have here is underneath the nose, there's one shadow line that merges with the lips right there, and then there's a secondary cast shadow line right over here. So that tells me there's two light sources. Now, if you want to make this um, your own drawing, you can eliminate one of the light sources. We even see it over here underneath the lower lip. So there's the dark shadow underneath the lower lip, and that is our line that separates light from the dark. And then you see over here, there's a secondary cast shadow that's a little bit lighter. So you always want to pick up, always is too strong of a word. You want to think about picking a three-quarter view because you're going to get the most three-dimensional form when you draw that way. You want to really try to pick a statue or view, or if you're lighting the, the statue or the figure yourself, you want to try to use form light and uh, maybe a variation on form light. And if you're drawing from a photo that you found on Google or a statue at the museum, always assess how many light sources are hitting the statue. So you're not confused as to what you're looking at. Because what this is in the middle of the screen is a statue at the Met, but I look at it as just a sheer optical illusion of just light shapes and shadow shapes. It's nothing more, it's nothing less. So I have to try to get my hand, this thing, uh, to try to relax and draw those shapes that I see and create the two-dimensional optical illusion with my pencil on the paper. And if you could um, try to think of it that way, that's gonna help you tremendously. So uh, to your question, it depends on what effect you want, what is your goal? So yeah, absolutely, my goal with this piece is just to start off and show you, let me just keep this here for a moment because it goes really dark. My goal for this drawing here today on YouTube during this live stream is just to show you how I start with continuous line and how I start in general. Uh, now, I haven't decided if I want to match the values or go a little bit darker. It's going to be kind of, to tell you the truth, a royal pain in the butt to match these values because they're really, really light. And as soon as I start to use my brush, it's going to get really, really dark. But let's just start because I'll, I'll, I'll chat with you as I go. Um, now, people always ask me, Matt, do you use a sketchbook? Do you use a sketchbook? No, I don't. I use 11 by 14 pads. Let me show you very quickly here. I don't use a sketchbook. I use these pads, okay? And um, this is my favorite pad. This is my sketchbook. So what I do is I just kind of sketch in that pad. So last night, um, when I was thinking about what I was gonna draw for the live stream, I just did a quick sketch of the statue. Uh, that was a quick sketch of the Bouguereau one. So this is kind of like what I do in my sketchbook, stuff like this, okay? What am I doing? I'm holding it up in front of my face. I should just put it over here, but I wanna kinda give you a size relationship. It's just 11 by 14 paper. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just for me, sketching, right? Trying to keep my eye-hand coordination going. So now when I start this piece, uh, it's really gonna be all about placement. So for me with the video, I'm trying to figure out, okay, where's the edge of that video screen? Um, now, if this was for an illustration, I'd be like, okay, how big is the book? And I need to kind of draw within the confines of the book. So where's my high point? Okay, my high points over there, my, my low points over there. Now I just need to lean back and pretend that I'm in a recliner so my head doesn't get in the way and you guys can watch me draw. So what I'm gonna do here is um, just try to think about, don't worry about being perfect with the first line. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm like trying to be really perfect and when you try to be perfect, bad things happen. So my first line, and I did this in the warm up is simply a gesture line. And I, I, I wish I can point on that statue. So I'll use my drawing to point. So it's a, it's a gesture line that comes down. Um, let me get that drawing. 
so I can teach you something. So that's my start line, okay? Now it's a little small, okay? It's a little small, but my start line, I did this. So I'm kind of going here to the bottom of the chin. So that's my gesture, okay? So that looks kind of small, uh, big time. It looks kind of small, but let me keep going. Okay, because I can always zoom in with the camera later later on. And that is just, um, let me start over. So it's right here. Okay, and then I'm going to just squint a little bit. Uh, come on up. I'm going to go a little taller because I want this to be a little bit bigger. Uh, gesture down. Gesture down. Now, I'm doing her hair that is the smooth part of her hair, not the rough texture of the stone. Okay, so that's, I, I want to make that clear. So I'm coming on down. This is probably going to screw up my proportions because my first line was what I thought was pretty on. Um, and then I come down to the chin. So first line, gesture, motion, rhythm. Okay, you're, you're trying to do a whole bunch of things at once. Now, I'll make this come alive for you guys. So now, I, I, that's a big line of action for me with this portrait. Most people think of line of action with a figure, but I also think about it with a portrait. And uh, that's my line of action, and it's going to be different on every single portrait that you draw. Okay. Um, now, I'm going to just try to get this little eye socket area and uh, cheekbone. Now I'm going to go very light with this. Okay, so let me push out. And that is already too dark. So today um, we can see a couple little screw ups. But that's okay. You want to keep going now. She Her chin dips down. So, so far I'm really doing my absolute best to use continuous line. So I need to go a little bit more rhythmic with this. So the point of continuous line is not to draw with straight lines. It is to draw with organic lines because this sculptor, uh, William Ordway, was pretty good with these organic shapes. And uh, yes, the sculpture technically is synthetic because it's man-made, but we're dealing with an artist and the artist really understands um, curves and round organic shapes. So that would be the shape of her face. Now, what I can do is um, I need to get a different pencil or a sharper point, take the edge off the point. Uh, now what I need to do is I find it difficult to keep proportions accurate unless I start with the eye or some central part of the face. Yeah, so there's, I consider, uh, well, I could use many, many different techniques to draw a portrait, and you want to practice uh, all of them. You want to practice maybe trying this a couple times in your sketchbook. You want to practice drawing a portrait with the angles, and you also want to practice drawing um, you know, a portrait starting from an eye so you can keep your proportions that way. So I, I'm just trying to give you options here and different things for you to practice. So there's one thing that is really, really important with um, being an artist is that uh, in the beginning, when you're learning how to draw. So now this is just pure, pure continuous line. Uh, you don't want to train yourself uh, to become a what I would call a one hit wonder where you only um, draw one way and that's the only thing that you know how to do. So like that's important because you could use a technique as a crutch and if somebody takes that technique away from you, you can't draw. So I try to teach different techniques to my students uh, so they're able to draw in, in different scenarios uh, using different techniques. So for instance, drawing with form light uh, is one way to draw, but then that starts to become a crutch. And uh, that's no good if you can only draw with form light. So then you try to draw with bad lighting. And it, it's really good um, to do multiple techniques uh, just to keep yourself true, okay? Because like art is like everything else in life like after a while it just becomes like a habit and you're like yeah okay i got this so maybe one could argue that continuous line is that for me so that's my first go through okay is it perfect no uh is it the first go through yes so yeah the loomis head really helps with placement um and uh so that's a good thing like i i use measurements and all that um and and that's very very beneficial for this one 
um, today I'm just trying to go in a, in a complete different direction for you guys so now I go back to home base now I, I already see some of my mistakes and that's cool that I see it early on so now what I can do is start here at home base once again okay and come on down to the mouth no straight lines here come on down to the chin now the bottom of her chin rolls in you don't want to go too dark with that it curves under and now let's go to the outside part of her jaw right here so that's a major landmark that I need to get in and my first line was not correct so I'm putting it in a little bit darker there and now I'm gonna come on down over here I'm just getting the rough part of this statue the chipped stone aspect of the marble versus the smooth so this is I would say the bottom of her ear which is very even with the bottom of the nose but not quite uh, so now I've got my chipped part of the stone right here okay so as I go I'm, I don't want to get stuck I, I don't want this to be perfect perfect is the enemy of you having a good time and um, just making it happen I'm gonna kick this out once again a little bit more let's come back up this edge and I'm gonna leave it there so now let me go back uh, to my home base put in a little bit of shape okay and kick this out oh yeah that needs to be kicked out right over there okay um, I'm gonna go into the face here in, in a moment I just want to resolve a couple of more things here uh, this woman does have a center line there in her head uh, on her hair I meant to say every head has a center line but I kinda physically see it on the statue uh, now this is from her forehead she has a very short forehead okay let's come on down over here and that's a braid in her hair so I'm looking at the distance from the braid of her hair to the bottom of her ear uh, for a comparison and let's come on down so what what this is is uh, we practice this in the classroom all the time this is a really good exercise the Loomis head is a great exercise as well this is a different type of exercise this is an exercise where you try to um, yeah try to keep your pencil on the paper and you do your very best to draw it with continuous line now when you do this it's actually gonna feel very awkward at first and you're gonna hate this but again, you've got to kind of give it a little time to blossom. Uh, every drawing technique that you start, uh, one that you've never used before, when you first use it, you're like, oh yeah, no, I don't like that. Um, but you need to kind of give things time to uh, blossom a little bit. And, and my students ask me, well, I, I really didn't like that technique, Matt, with the continuous line. Um, do I have to use it? And I'm like, no, you don't have to use the continuous line technique, but understand the difference between hating it and giving it time to blossom and, and giving it time to work for you. You, you. Sometimes you need to spend time with these techniques um, before you kind of discard them and, and throw them away. Um, you need to kind of, yeah, live a little bit with them. They're kind of like a roommate. And maybe at first, like your roommate has this really annoying habit and they watch this uh, really terrible show on Netflix but after a while, you're like, wait a second, that show is pretty good. And yeah, that habit is pretty annoying, but um, this person's kind of cool. You kind of have to think about your drawing techniques a little bit like that. So first go through, I still feel as though I've got some stuff that is off. But now let's not, uh, let me not freak over that and let's keep going. Okay, so I want to just really think about the braids of her hair as cylinders. So I'm going to start now with this continuous line. Uh, to draw the center shadow shape on the underplane of her hair and right over here there's an underplane okay and I'm just still doing the continuous line so this continuous line I learned from my wonderful teacher back in 1989 into 1990 his name is John Ruggieri he is still teaching at the School of Visual Arts and we used to just draw things with continuous line and he kind of wouldn't let us lift our pencil off of the paper um, and it was brutal when I first started doing it I, I absolutely hated it but he he was not a teacher that was about academic realism he was about telling stories with his drawings and his drawings are very very powerful with China marker on newsprint uh, so yeah I, I can I attribute this technique that I'm showing you right now this continuous line so I just lifted my pencil off of the paper 
for the first time just because my thumb is killing me. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's keep going here. So now uh, rest your thumb, kind of shake it out because when you draw, my thumb is equal a little bit lower than my heart. If you hold your hand above you, I see these people draw on YouTube. Um, you know, I, I have a student, a coaching student, and he shows me other teachers and what they teach. Um, I don't know why he does that, but he does, Craig. Uh, you know who you are. And um, yeah, I see these people draw, and I'm like, oh my God, uh, how do they hold their hands up like that above their heart all day? Uh, your hand would fall asleep after a while. So I like to shake my hand out, and my philosophy is draw for 20 minutes, get up. Okay, so now let me just put in a little bit more tone here because I'm, I'm a huge believer in seeing things with shape and not just with an outline. So we're just going to put some tone in over here. I'm going to, so when you put this tone in, now I'm putting the tone in on the right side, so that automatically means this is going to get smudged. And that's okay. So you see what I'm doing? All those initial lines are now going away. And I'm going to do this cast shadow. Now I'm almost doing continuous line with the tone. So let's do the cheekbone and let's now dive into the interior of the face. And you see what I'm doing here? I'm keeping my pencil on the page. Look at my eyes. I'm looking, looking, looking as much as I possibly can. I'm not staring at my paper. That's a big mistake that a lot of artists do is they look down at their paper way too much. And before you know it, you're doing a memory drawing and you're not doing a life drawing. Now, this is not a life drawing, but I think, yeah, just go with me on it. Uh, it's drawing from a photograph, but it's the same rules for me apply uh, to drawing from the photograph as drawing from life. Um, for the most part, way more than drawing out of your imagination. Okay, so now I'm putting in that side plane of her face. And this is going to help me to see the proportions like in a major, major sort of way. Okay, so I, I, I feel as though the left side of her hair needs to be kind of kicked out to the left a touch. But before I even bother doing that, so let's um, squint, squint at the photo. See what I'm doing with my eyes? I'm squinting. So there's no light over here on that side of her neck. Is it, is it my darkest dark? No, it's not. So squint, and I see this cast shadow line wrapping around the statue over here, okay? And uh, that comes down, it wraps around the form, and that tells me that the statue needs to be longer. So a little bit more continuous line. Okay, cool. So I'm going to leave the bottom. That bottom is really gross, uh, but let's keep going here. Let me not judge myself. So uh, let's get this ear comes in. Okay, and cool. The jaw comes down, and that cat, I'm, I'm holding my pencil like, I don't know, I woke up today, and my hand feels like a stiff brick, like somebody wrapped it in concrete. So I just need to relax. You just need to relax, do some stretches. I'm talking to myself. Uh, um, Michael, is there a point when you will measure the ratio of the width of the head to other parts? So um, l let me give you like some context on, on that. Yeah, I'm doing that constantly as I'm drawing. So I'm constantly measuring. Now, um, I remember years ago, my father, when I was growing up as a boy, used to uh, collect cars and he used to restore old cars. And there was this one guy, Nelson Medina was his name. And my dad used to bring, this is the seventies when I was younger. So my dad used to bring his car to this guy's shop, Nelson Medina, and Nelson Medina used to pinstripe the car, put like a, a line going down the side of the car with paint. And my father like wanted me to be a pinstripe artist because uh, it was the coolest job. This guy got, got to pinstripe Ferraris and stuff like that. And so we would go there and Nelson Medina would just put like a little piece of tape um, down the side of the car that was like an eighth of an inch just to kind of roll his thumb along the tape and he would just freehand the line it, it, it was insane like and so what i'm doing here is kind of like what nelson medina did like i gave myself a couple of parameters the parameters are this here's the edge of my video screen so i call this a youtube video drawing it's not necessarily like a personal drawing so i'm drawing it to fit this monitor to so you guys can see it in the best sort of way that is clear for you so that's a parameter. 
that's a parameter right over here. I'm all the way on the right side of the YouTube screen uh, with my pencil. And so I'm trying to fit my drawing in, into that space. Now, in terms of measurements of her, uh, what I could do and, and what I see is when you draw with a continuous line, what like I'm trying to show you here this morning, is when you do that over and over and over and over again for years, is that you train your eye to look as you're moving your pencil. Okay, so let me give you another analogy that will kind of put this into context. So I'm a huge, huge hockey fan, and I'm devastated that the National Hockey League put shut down their season. But, you know, who am I? Uh, it is what it is. So I just have to deal with it. And one of the biggest skills that hockey players have, in my opinion, is not skating. It's not shooting the puck. It's that they stick handle and stick handle the puck without looking at the puck. So they are looking at who they're going to pass the puck to. They're looking to see who's going to knock them um, on the ground, on the ice. They're not looking at the puck. So as I'm doing this continuous line, it's a much, much more organic way for me right now at this stage in my artistic career to do uh, measuring. Okay, now could I say and start to draw measure lines on my drawing and say, okay, yeah, let's do that. What is right below her hair? Now, I would probably even draw that on my um, top of my photo reference, but I can't because the photo reference is on my screen right now. But I could do it in Photoshop. All right. uh, so that is, a, that is like one of the most important skills. Oh, stiff hand. That is one of the most important skills that hockey players have um, is that they stick handle without looking at the puck. And so you need to take measurements on the fly as you are drawing. Now, I'm not saying you have to do the continuous line, but I am saying that you should practice the continuous line and see where it takes you. you. You know, give it time to blossom because there's more to portrait drawing than just doing the angles. And I'm all about the angles, but the angles create straight lines. And the angles is a great technique. It's a great way to draw. And I promote it every single opportunity that I get. But the angles is straight. You have to remember that. And straight lines are not organic. And we are drawing a human being, and there's organic lines on a human being. So now you see what I'm doing here? I screwed up. But I'm not going to worry about it because I press down really lightly on my pencil. And is this eraser any good? Yes. So I can erase out with this eraser and move over my center line. I can erase out all of that mess. And just look, this is not dark, so I'm going to erase all that out. This is light, that's not dark, I'm going to erase all of that out. Ah, now I know that I need to move some things over to the left. So let's get our Big Mama paintbrush and brush off the eraser crumbs. And let's move, let's lean back, lean back and look, lean back and look, lean back. And let's move this over ever so slightly, about an eighth of an inch. Not even. That wasn't even a sixteenth of an inch. What am I talking about? Okay. So now I think um, what I could do is I could do another go through with the light and shade on her hair before I get to the facial features. Uh, I, but I want to just maybe see if I can't um, get. So your eyes follow the model, not the line. I'm. So what I'm doing? That's a great question, Michael. So as I'm drawing, um, look at my pencil. It's moving, and now look at my eyes. I'm looking at my pencil. I'm looking at the drawing, at the photo reference. I'm moving my pencil. I'm looking at my drawing. I'm looking at the photo reference. So you're kind of doing both. Hey, Jeff. Nice to see you, man. Uh, okay, so now I think what I need to do is I've worked on the shape of the hair. I have the shape of the face. I have the light side. I have the shadow side. Uh, my first thought is that I think her face is a little too tall. Uh, and that could be an, a really easy fix. I could raise the chin. But before I judge that and start to like fret about it, let me just start to draw a little bit now inside of the model. So I'm going to do a little bit of that cast shadow that her hair is casting on her forehead. Okay, a little bit over here. And then it comes down. And then we angle around uh, the side plane. So let me just put a little bit of tone there. This is just an abstract shape, okay? And then this is the darker shadow. 
Because remember, I, I said in the beginning of this quick little video here that there's two lights hidden in her, so two shadows. Hey, is this going to be saved to my channel? Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you can't stay for this live stream, I get that. So the first part of the live stream will be saved here on YouTube. And that first part of the live stream is going to probably be like an hour. Um, I think the average is about an hour and 10 minutes. And then I'll film. I'm going to do a live stream on Facebook today. I just want to try it out to see how it goes. And then for the rest of the day, I'm going to work on this drawing and film some videos that will go on the um, website only, the DTO area, members area. Uh, how do you decide which mistakes to let go and which to fix before moving on? So that's the measurement thing, Scott. So for me, it's a width. So it's w what's right below the edge of the hair. So that I wanted to fix immediately. In terms of a height thing, in terms of fixing that, I think I'm too early in the game, Scott, uh, to fix that. If I, I, I'm feeling it's a little too long, but I don't know just yet. I, I, I got to kind of play it out a, a little bit more. Um, there's the center line I moved over. So yeah, stuff like that. But it's, it's widths and heights uh, and center lines are pretty important. Okay, so I think we need to start diving into her features. Um, now, I don't think of it as features. Uh, I think of it as shapes. I just think of this as a, a puzzle. So you have a flat puzzle that you're putting together on the kitchen table and you're looking for these shapes in the puzzle and uh, some shapes are light, some shapes are dark. It's just abstract until you put the puzzle together and all of a sudden you got the picture of the landscape or the dog or, or the, the star, um, the pop star. So I'm not thinking of this as uh, she has eyes. I'm thinking of it as that these are shapes. So I somebody asked me last week, about connecting. How do you connect the eyes? I'm trying to draw this. So I'm not blocking you guys. Um, I connect the eyes by going across with a gesture. Now, as I do this, I'm looking at the height. The, so that would be her eyebrow. And I'm looking at where her eyebrow would be to where that shadow is that I just drew on her forehead. So there's that height there that I really want to get, and then this. So I, I need to think about eyebrows in many, many different ways right now. So I need to think of them. The title of the piece is Partridge, and I think that means peace, maybe. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it does mean peace because the Partridge family, my God, didn't they have like this van and they had like the peace sign on it, the school bus they had? Um, so yeah, it just means peace and tranquility. So when you draw eyebrows, eyebrows could really change uh, it keeps buffering okay uh, is anybody else having a buffering issue losing connection let me try something here hmm how about now Is anybody else losing the connection? Ooh, that's weird. I wonder why. Um, okay, give me a second here. Give me buffer in here too. Okay, give me a second. I learned my lesson not to text. Um, when my thing is in front of my camera. Let me just make sure people are not using too much Wi-Fi. One more text. Okay, refreshing worked for you, Amit?
I'll be with you guys back in a second here. Cool. So it uh, refreshing worked for you guys. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thank you guys. Better now, Aurora. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Better now, I think. Okay. Yeah. So uh, perhaps, and I don't think I can change it now midway through the live stream. So I'm streaming at 440p instead of 1080p. That might have something to do with it. Uh, so maybe I will... Um, <laughs> Uh, maybe I will not stream at 440p anymore. I'll only stream at 1080p. Okay. All right. So let, let me keep going here. And uh, maybe I'll come, I'll, I'll stream for a little while longer. And then maybe I'll come back on YouTube in, in, in a little while. Because I, I, I committed myself to drawing all day and, and drawing this out. Um, okay. So let's see here. I'm looking at this now from far away. Let's drop that. Her eyebrow really drops. Okay. So let's um, start to do some placement. All right, Mary, I apologize. I don't know what to do about the buffering thing. I would just try to refresh. So that's my first commitment now, right there, that line within her face. First commitment, um, second commitment, a little bit of a shape, third commitment, don't go dark with it, kind of go light, okay? And I'm going to take a wild guess that uh, it's the streaming at 440p. So maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll stream for a little while longer um, and then I'll come back. So you see what I'm doing there? These are just shapes, okay? Now, um, I, now I, I've, I've gone better. Uh, I've gone better. I just read what Annie said. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, I've gone from continuous line now and I'm switching it up. You see, there's no um, not clear pixels. Aurora, I would just refresh, okay? I don't know how I can help you. Um, but yeah, just, just try to refresh. And then I'm going to come back on, on YouTube later. Um, and I'm going to go on Facebook today as well. So like I said, it's, it's, it's a day of drawing and streaming. So now I'm just committing to where I think the bottom of her nose is. It's also a Saturday on YouTube, so yeah. I'm committing to, but I'm pressing down light, so if I, you know, if it's not right, it's not right, I can erase. I'm committing to the center of her lips, and now I'm gonna commit. So I don't think I'm, I'm too long with her face, not at all. So, so what I have here is um, this, top of the eyebrow. That's a commitment. So now I'm starting to, now let's just try to draw this accurate shape of the cast shadow. I am not pressing down hard. Okay. So why don't I do this? Cause I'm getting a lot of you guys here tell me it's um, buffering. I'm going to pause the live stream and then I'm going to come right back and I'm going to live stream again on YouTube. Now, listen, I'm not going to send out an email. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just, you know, if you're hopefully you're subscribed to my channel, um, just look for me again. I'm going to go live again. Is that cool with you guys? So maybe I'll switch from 440p to 1080p and we won't be buffering like this. Arjun, what do you think? Because I'm kind of just getting into this for you guys.
Okay. Yeah, it looks like we're really buffering here. Okay. 